Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to walk you through a different kind of diagonal beam. This would be one for diagonal cuts. I am continuing the work that I did in the last video, okay? But in this case, like I said, different method because we have a different type of beam going in to support uh, between the top and bottom of our bridge. So, same kind of idea, except where I'm going to start this time is a little bit different. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, in fact, you know what I'm going to do for a minute? I'm going to hide this component. I'm just going to click on the light bulb so you can't see it. It's going to make things just a little bit easier to see. It's still there, just not visible, okay? And I'm going to start by drawing a sketch, again, on the front surface of the bottom board, okay? And I'm going to draw a diagonal in just a second that connects from here to here, but it's going to go from top to bottom instead of connecting side to side. Pretty simple to do. I'm going to draw a line. In fact, no, I'm going to hit P and I'm going to project first. I'm going to project this geometry and I'm going to project this geometry. That way I can lock into those endpoints, those corners. Now I'm going to draw a line from corner to corner. And I'm going to draw another one for the other side of the beam. And notice, I mean, I'm not even going to try to make it diagonal. I mean, those obviously aren't parallel, just to prove a point here. Okay. I'm going to use the parallel constraint to say this line needs to be parallel to this line. So there's my beam. Now all I need to do is get the dimensions, right? So I'm going to hit D to dimension from here to here is, and like I said in the last video, in our particular case, it's one and a half inches. Click OK. There's my beam. It's really simple, right? I click Stop Sketch. Um, I can go on before I, I, if I need to. I can find out that the length of this is going to be 15.993 inches. And you know, really, if I'm doing beams like this all the way across, as long as I'm consistent, I could probably go 16 inches and get away with that, right? And then um, you'll also notice that the angle can be measured. So if I go here to here, it'll tell me that the angle is 32.4 degrees. So that can be pretty important too if I'm doing angle cuts in order to make this fit, right? Not 32 and not 33, somewhere in between, a little under half. Now. Let's, we're finished with the sketch, so let's go here and let's extrude. I'm going to extrude this shape. I'm going to extrude it backwards. And then as far as where I'm going to extrude, it's really simple. All I have to do is click on the far surface, and it says, oh, you want me to cut off there. There you go. And the beam is created. But the trick, just like last time, this is not a join. This is not one with the bottom of the truss. This is an entirely new component. I click OK. And I now have a beam that connects top to bottom in just a couple of steps from my truss. And if I'm building this in real life, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here, I'm going to put some screws in here, and I'm going to drill straight down in that thing with those screws, right? So hopefully this makes sense. Um, in the next video, I'm going to walk you through then how do I take, I've got a finished truss on one side, how do I take it and mirror it to create the other side quickly and easily. Hopefully this makes sense. If you have any questions, feel free to ask.